put a little makeup on me so I look good. <laughs> Uh, military to me was like the Boy Scouts. Hey, if I had to do it all over again, I'd do the same thing. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Aerial gunner too, you would do it all over again. They call them goners. Goners. Yeah. On the left side of the ship. You're on the left side of the ship? Yeah. Yeah. Way back right in there, that opening. Yeah, is that just completely open? Just well, the looking. earlier ships were that way. Later, they you're in fiberglass, you know. So you're at 24,000 feet, unpressurized, with the side of the airplane completely open. Yeah, and you're always cracking your mask that froze up and everything. Were you on oxygen? Oh, yeah. You're wearing full leathers with the warm head masks, oxygen and you're holding on to what caliber? 50. 50 cal machine gun out of the side of a plane at 24,000 feet. <laughs> That's unreal. Nothing like that exists these days. Oh no, they're all drones now. <laughs> you don't have to leave home. Yeah. yeah. Charles Deal. Yeah, I'm in July, I'll be 95. What were you doing at the time you were drafted? I work in a paper mill in Longview, Washington. Longview. Working, making paper, crepe paper. I was drafted in 45, I think. What was your job when you entered into the Army? To start with, I was driving a steak truck. There was a truck strike in Michigan. Yeah, they put me on the one of them big rigs. I could hardly see the rear of the truck. They yeah. were so long. Then they snipped us over and we took care of German prisoners picking fruit and vegetables out in the field. So the people that you guarded, the prisoners, the POWs, were they Germans? They were Germans. They loved it here. A lot of them come back after the war. And you said they were nice? Very nice. Oh, the SS troopers were son of a gun. You saw an SS trooper? Oh, I saw several of them. And were they mean? They were vicious. They had a different outlook on life than you and I. That they were supreme and they were superior. We don't really have POWs. We, we send them outside of the United States. Man, we had hundreds of thousands of them over here. They took care of a lot of the needs that the boys in the service had done previously. I was in the Woodlawn Cafe in Steele, North Dakota having breakfast, and uh, we heard uh, over the radio that Pearl Harbor had been attacked. I was working in a shipyard in Richmond, California, and I got noticed that my number had come up when I got drawn for the draft, and they sent me a letter, and I went in, and bang, I was in the service. They sent me to Camp Claiborne, Louisiana for my basic training, and when we finished that, they put us on a ship and sent us to Europe. I was just a young boy, and uh, I'd only been been in for a short time. Eighteen years old, rolling on my head from my tail. I was in the engineer regiment, and we were builders. We built bridges and buildings. And did you see France get destroyed when Hitler went through it? What did it look like? Did you see Paris at all? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, there was a lot of bomb damage. They had these big guns that were firing off of tanks and ground artillery. Well, they just blew up everything and destroyed it. We spent several months in South Wales, and uh, we were getting bombed at that time. We were sleeping in parameter tents, and the bombers had come over at night. Yeah, a bunch of bombers had come over and drop their bombs and take off again. See, they have a siren that would go off and and uh, alert you when the, when the German aircraft were coming. What's an AT-6? Is that a training plane? Yeah. Okay. It, it, it's really a good workhorse. It gobbles a lot of gas. Because I flew the T-6 Texan. That's what I flew right there. So did you get a fly in the back of that? Oh, we were in the back of that with a flex gun, yeah. That's so crazy. So is that where you learned? It was flying in the yeah, back of this yeah, thing? Yeah, yeah. Wow, so that's how but they anyway, taught aerial gunners back in the day. Before we left there, yeah. they got the P-51s in there. Yeah, you went from flying in the back of the T-6 Texan to flying in the back of the P-51 yeah. with your gun. That's how you ended up yeah. doing it? Anyway, we go 
way up in the heavens, you know. How high are you? 10,000 feet? Is that what you're doing your shooting at? Uh, oh, I, I guess, because those guys were nuts. Were Americans scared of the fact you were guarding Germans? No. There was no place for them to go. No place for them. Uh, they were kind of outlaws in the world. They started World War II and everything, you know. So and they were very well Germans? educated. I had boils on my neck, and the guy that treated he had his nurse's surgery, and he's good. He got rid of them. This they, was a prisoner that helped you out? Yeah, the, the prisoners were taking care of the medical, oh, and they were good sad. too. But I had a good time in the service. I did what I was supposed to do. I learned real quick, you do what you're told or else. We were building a general hospital in Toul, France. And when the Germans reinvaded, about 11 o'clock in the morning, they jerked us off the job and told us to put all our tools away. We were going up the front. On the front line, we was on one side of the river and the Germans were on the other. We were shooting at each other. See, our ship blew up. I was in the air, but I was unconscious. And going down, I came to and blacked out. and. Uh, when I came to again, I was on top of a big red barn, and there were two German soldiers on furlough, and they got me down off the roof. And then that evening, uh, they took us to the hospital in Hippenheim, but my fractured jaw, and the Italian doctor that worked on me, he was a POW too, <laughs> and they took us to Frankfurt, and we got to an uh, interrogation center, and the we were all in separate cells, and the next morning, uh, they started interviewing us, and this went on for about two weeks. Anyway, the last interview, he was a Luftwaffe, he was a colonel. Finally found this big file and he threw it in front of me. He had everything about me. Uh, that was a big sinking feeling. Uh, he said, Phil, we're going to load you up and send you to a camp. Anyway, they took us to uh, Stalag 17B in Krems, Austria. In the morning, we got an equivalent to a big cup of hot water. For lunch, we had the uh, rutabaga soup. But when I got there, some guys had been in camp for a year and a half. I went in to get my jaw taken care of, and uh, they had to re crack the jaw <laughs> and uh, set it perfectly and had it wired up. And I was on liquid for about, oh, three weeks. I think it's good if a lot of these young kids serve a few months and learn how to behave. I got married right after the war. We got married, stayed married, we were still married 75 years this year. She's upstairs there, she, she hardly gets out of bed. I was in the military for almost three years. And then I, when I got discharged, I went home and, and got married. <laughs> If you could give a piece of advice to the younger generation, what would you say to them? Never say no to your wife, say yes, dear. And let her have the checkbook. <laughs> and take a bath before you go to bed. There you go, I love okay. it.